This brings us to another kind of intervention, which is known as parametric interventions. So in structural interventions, say that this is the graph we're considering, and we have this structural equation for y. In structural interventions, we saw that when we do a structural intervention on y, we delete all of y's parents, and we give it some noise variable that we're setting y's distribution to be equal to the distribution of that variable. So this destroys all the causal structure for all of the parents of y. We lose all of that causal structure. That's why it's called a structural intervention. In contrast, a parametric intervention for this same graph here, it doesn't destroy all that structure. Instead, we just change the parameters of this function mapping all of these variables that are the parents of y to y. So we, we have these parameters, theta, and we just change those parameters to theta prime. So you can think of a parametric intervention as not changing y so that it no longer depends on its parents, but rather than just changing how y depends on its parents, changing the conditional distribution of y given its parents. So some examples of parametric inter interventions are, say you're intervening on a gene, you could just be sort of nudging the gene in a certain way rather than completely setting its value or setting its distribution. Or if you pass some law, like uh, some tax reform law, that doesn't completely change the causal structure of the economy as much as nudge it in a certain direction, change the sort of conditional distributions. And other names that you might see in the literature for these are hard versus soft, so calling a structural intervention a hard intervention, or a parametric intervention a soft intervention, or perfect versus imperfect. Structural is perfect, and parametric is imperfect. And it's important to emphasize that parametric interventions are generalization of structural interventions. So you can recover a structural intervention from a parametric intervention from when you set this theta prime, you change this function f such that now this function is constant with respect to a, b, and c. So this function just ignores a, b, and c then you would have recovered a structural intervention from a parametric intervention. However, it's common for people to refer to this sort of difference as the parametric intervention. So this parametric intervention set minus the structural intervention set, and then call that like the parametric interventions or soft interventions. That's not uncommon to see that kind of use of the terms. And that's what we'll be considering now. So that's parametric interventions that are not structural interventions. That means that after we've intervened on y, y still depends on all of its parents. We haven't destroyed the causal structure. We'll see that not destroying the causal structure is useful for causal discovery. We'll first consider the number of interventions we need for the single node case when we're doing single node parametric interventions. So how many single node parametric interventions do we need to identify the causal graph? And it turns out that n minus one interventions are sufficient and n minus ones are also necessary in the worst case. So with parametric interventions, we get the same numbers as with structural interventions. This comes from this paper from 2007. So we know that we can identify up to the Markov equivalence class if we only have observational data, no interventions, and we're not making any semi-parametric assumptions. We learned this last week. And on the previous slide, we saw that we can identify the exact causal graph, so just a single graph, with n minus one single variable interventions. But how about the in-between? So how much of the graph can we identify with fewer interventions? With observational data, we can identify the skeleton, and we can orient the edges that are involved in immoralities. This might lead to a Markov equivalence class of many graphs, and we know that we can whittle that Markov equivalence class down into a single graph. We can identify the exact graph if we make n minus one single variable parametric interventions. But what if we made fewer interventions and we identify not quite the exact causal graph, but some class that is smaller than the Markov equivalence class? That's what we'll consider now. So this core question here is, how much of the graph can we identify with a given set of interventions that's not necessarily n-1 interventions.